welcome one and all, I'm Alexis, aka The Soft Reader, and I'm here today to do my March favorites video. I have a lot of stuff to talk about, so I'm going to try and uh, go over everything pretty quickly, not spend too much time on any one thing, but um, I'll have a lot of good stuff to talk about, so we'll go ahead and get into it. Starting off with movies, the first movie I watched um, this month was The Shape of Water, obviously directed by Guillermo del Toro, and this started because I was trying to catch up on some of the Oscar Best Picture nominations that I hadn't seen. So I went ahead and started with The Shape of Water. I definitely think this is a beautifully shot movie. The lighting, the mise-en-scene, the cinematography, Doug Jones' creature makeup, all of it is really beautifully done. I really loved having a mute main character who uses sign language to communicate. I like that they chose not to include subtitles for when she uses her sign language. I loved the message of the movie and the metaphor for otherness and feeling different and society and oppression. I really, I really loved all of that. My biggest gripe with The Shape of Water was that I genuinely felt that the sexual content was unnecessary. I felt like the movie could have been so much stronger if they had chosen not to force sex into the narrative in the way that they did. I had mentioned to my friend that for me, this felt like the perfect opportunity to express that love can be pure and beautiful without having to have sex in a relationship. And so for me, that would have made the love and the message so much stronger. So that is, is my one complaint, is that I wish they wouldn't have tried to fit sex into the narrative because I feel like that's the moment for most audiences when they kind of disconnect from the movie and the message. So that is my one complaint about that. And the next movie I watched in March was Three Billboards Outside Ebbing, Missouri, which is of course a Martin McDonough film. And I really, really liked this. Um, my favorite to win Best Picture was Get Out, admittedly, but I think Three Billboards is probably my second favorite movie I watched of the bunch. I just really liked the story and the very, very dark humor and how emotional the movie got for me. This is definitely a movie about unlikable people. There are characters that you don't want to root for that make crazy choices that you can't understand their logic behind and yet they're all unbelievably human and I connect to that and that's why I think the acting in this movie is incredible. I mean I really do think every actor in this movie really stepped up to the bat and I think that's the strongest part for me. I also, like I said, I liked that it's a movie about very tough topics and the way that they're dealt with isn't even necessarily like the right way to deal with most of these topics I feel like but, but the way it's done is so like in your face that I feel like it it works for the context of the movie and yeah I, I really really liked this I mean it's very intense it's a lot of sitting in your chair going what the hell but it's it's emotional and it's funny in times and I would really really recommend it I really really enjoyed this one after that I watched Lady Bird which was of course directed by Greta Gerwig and I did not love this one as much as other people did um, and that probably in part was my fault before I started this movie um, I'd seen a lot of reviews that said it was very much about the relationship between Christine and her mother and so I kind of went in expecting that to be the main focus of the movie and I do think on the under level that's what this movie is about this movie is about her growing up and how she reacts with her mother but for me I wish the movie had just really been about that I felt like the movie tried to cover so much of Christine's last year in school and so much of her experiences and you know it dealt with her you know trying to reinvent herself it dealt with her being in a relationship for the first time it dealt with her financial struggles and her college and also her relationship with her mom but also the relationship with everybody else in her life and while that's realistic for what it's like to be a senior in high school I felt like in an hour and a half movie it was way too much ground to try and cover and ultimately at the end of the movie a lot of these subplots left me very unsatisfied with how they ended and how they wrapped up and a lot of the subplots ultimately felt like they took me out of the experience because I was kind of like, I don't really care. And I, I wish the movie had solely focused 
front and center more on the relationship between her and her mother because I do think that was the strongest part of the entire story and that was the part that I felt like I could connect the most with. So yeah, this one was kind of a miss for me. The last movie I watched in March was of course one that I was so excited to see and that was Love, Simon. This movie, I loved it so much. I mean, I thought it was endearing, I thought it was charming, I thought it was exactly what the queer community needed. It was a narrative that's going to be so important for so many people. I felt like it was such a good, just fun, happy teen film for this generation. They did change a couple of things from the book. One of the changes they did make I really don't like, and of course I won't say what it is, um, but I'm really kind of against one of the changes they made um, just because it does make me feel a little weird. That being aside, I, I loved everything else about it. I loved the jokes, I loved the acting, I loved just seeing Simon's story on the screen, I loved the experience of going to see the movie. It was so good. <laughs> I'm, I'm so happy and proud of every person who worked on this and I loved a lot of the little easter eggs about Becky Avertali that were through the movie and it was just... I loved it. <laughs> that one change aside, I really really loved it. The next thing, I just realized I didn't turn on one of my lights. The next thing I'm going to talk about is the television I watched in March and the first one I'm going to mention is my brand new obsession and that is the Great British Baking Show. I binged like two and a half seasons on Netflix and I love this so much. I've always loved cooking shows. I grew up watching a lot of Food Network and cooking shows and so I do have a natural inclination to watch stuff like that but I really don't know that much about baking despite the fact that I come from a family with a lot of people who bake. I don't really know that much about baking but I love watching this and I love learning some of the stuff they're talking about um, because I actually find this very informative because the lady who does the voiceovers for the show um, explains a lot of technique and stuff so I really love that because I find it to be very very informational which I personally love. It's funny and it's stressful and it makes you so hungry because everything looks delicious and it's just, it's so lovely. And it's very relaxing to watch and everybody's so nice to each other. If this were an American show, people would be trying to sabotage each other constantly. Like, it would be a lot more cutthroat than I think it is as a British show. But this is my new obsession. I love this so much. It's so good. The next thing I'm going to talk about is an anime I watched and then DNF'd, and that is my Hime, which I watched with Melanie. I mentioned Melanie and I and her brother were doing these like anime watch-alongs, so we tried to watch my Hime this month, which I used to love a long time ago. I had seen this like two or three times when I was in my teens, so well over 10 years ago, and I really, really liked it then. And I was hoping to rewatch it now and that the feeling would still stand. But unfortunately, I don't think it holds up well in 2018. I think it's a show that's very much a product of its time. I think it came out in 2004. Um, it's not a timeless show like I had hoped it was. Um, we made it about halfway through and I knew Melanie really wasn't enjoying it. And ultimately, I found that I really wasn't enjoying it either. And so we did actually decide to stop watching this one. Um, like I said, it's very much a product of its time. It's very fan servicey. Um, a lot of the jokes are uncomfortable, honestly, to watch in 2018. Um, there's still parts of the story I really, really like. I still think there are parts of the story that are very strong, but it, it's it's kind of awkward to watch in 2018 because you can tell that it was something that was made. 15 years ago. It very much, very much reads that way. The last thing I'm going to mention is another anime I started in March and that was Akuma no Riddle, which is one that was recommended to me a very, very long time ago and then I was like, oh, I'll watch it eventually and then I never did. So I decided to watch the first half of this this month. I didn't get to finish it in March, but I'm very much enjoying it. I very much can't wait to complete it and see how it ends. And this basically follows an assassin girl who's sent to the school and her and 
12 other assassins are competing to kill a target and then our main character actually falls in love with the girl she's supposed to kill and so she decides to team up with this girl and protect her from the like other 12 assassins um, which in general sounds like a great storyline and then like every episode focuses on like one of the other assassins which is my favorite part by far is like getting to see each of these 12 girls individual stories and their individual like assassination styles and at first I wasn't in love with the art style but it admittedly grew on me but so I do plan on finishing this one in April but I did want to mention it here because I really enjoyed the first six episodes. The next thing I'm gonna mention too is music and the only thing I really have to talk about is of course that the Decemberists came out with their most recent album in March and it's called I'll Be Your Girl and I really have been enjoying this immensely. It's a very different sounding album, I think, from their past couple of albums. Um, I think this album includes a lot more synth than their previous albums do, but I still really like this album and I still think it is uniquely Decemberists. My favorite song on this album is probably um, Rusalka Rusalka uh, slash The Wild Rushes, which is like an eight minute song that's like two songs merge together um and it's like tells a story of like a russian folk creature um but it's probably my favorite song just because it's really eerie and haunting but it tells a very distinct story and it's very decemberisty to me in that way um but i do really really like that one i also like the title song i'll be your girl um, that one is like the closing song on the album, it's only about like two and a half minutes long, but I do really really like that one. I also like Your Ghost and Sucker's Prayer and Cutting Stone. Really I love all the songs. Um, probably my least favorite song is actually Severed, which was the single that came out. Um, for me it's the most synth song on the album, um, and it's still a good song, but it's not my favorite. But I have immensely been enjoying this album, um, which like surprised but the Decemberists came out with a new album and I've really been enjoying it. The last two things I'm gonna mention are two events I went to in March the first of which is that my brother and I went and saw the Fleet Foxes um, and that was really really enjoyable. He's much more a fan of the Fleet Foxes than I was. I only knew about a couple of their songs prior to going but I do think they put on a really good show. And then the last thing I did in March, um, which was just so incredible, was I actually got to see Jacksepticeye in New Orleans for his How Did We Get Here tour. Um, if you guys don't know, Jacksepticeye is an Irish uh, gameplay YouTuber. Um, so he's been doing a comedy show across North America called How Did We Get Here? And he stopped in New Orleans and I of course knew I wanted to go. So I actually got VIP front row tickets for that, which was awesome, especially because I didn't even know I got VIP tickets. I just got an email and it was like, you're VIP. And I was like, oh, okay, well, that's cool. <laughs> so I got to go to a q and I got to meet him um, and like ask him questions, which was really, really cool. And the show was really, really good. Um, it was funny, it was, you know, very much exactly what I would have imagined a Jacksepticeye show to be like. But it was just, it was really positive and it was, you know, very much about like overcoming life obstacles, which I think is very, very pivotal to Jack's message. It was really, really awesome to get to see his show in March. Alrighty guys, so that is everything I have to talk about in March. Obviously my March wrap up will be coming in a few days. I would love to know what was the best thing you watched in the month of March. If you like what I do, I upload videos on Monday, Wednesdays, and Saturdays, and I'll see you guys soon with another one. Bye!